Hey everyone, Reese here, and welcome to another episode of Control Alt Reese. And as you can see, we have a bit of a change of scenery for this one. And the reason for that is because I wanted to show you my arcade cabinet. And I thought it'd be really interesting just to put a video together, just telling the story of how I came to be in possession of this cab just over 10 years ago, and show you my initial attempt at restoring it from an empty shell, just using the very basic tools that I had available to me at the time. And I also want to show you the results of a more recent restoration and upgrade that I've started on. Uh, as you can see, it's not quite finished. And ask for your opinions and suggestions on stuff that I can add that to perhaps make it into an even better retro gaming experience. So let me take you back, over 10 years ago, to January 2009. I was living in my own house for the first time ever, well, technically my girlfriend slash future wife's house, and it was rented, and we were both working full-time jobs. So what better time to finally fulfil a dream that I'd had for many years, to own my very own arcade cabinet. So I found myself on eBay, of course, and found a nice little lot of three empty cabs. I stuck in a bid, and won all three for £13.07. After making arrangements with the seller, who happened to be about 10 miles away, I booked a day off of work and a friend with a big estate car was roped in to help collect. It turned out that the seller's company was involved in clearing out a local arcade years ago, and that he was now selling his house and needed to get rid of the three empty arcade cabs that had somehow ended up in his garage. I won't repeat what the other half said when she got home from work that day, but thankfully at least the other two surplus cabs, a Radio Times quiz machine and a little bar top thing which I really wish I'd kept, had already made their way to the tip. Incidentally, that Radio Times quiz machine was locked, and when we busted it open we discovered it had £15 in change rattling around in the bottom, meaning that the cabs basically ended up costing minus £2. Although of course I let my friend keep all of that change as petrol money. The Video Star Mark II was an interesting beast, with chunky gold T-moulding and a detachable control panel designed for two joysticks and, oddly, square fruit machine style buttons, which I'd later learned would be something of a hallmark for this manufacturer. So what's the story behind this cabinet and the company that made it? Well surprisingly enough, it was only very recently that I managed to find any information at all. EuropaCoin were a British manufacturer of arcade cabinets who took their name from the industrial estate in Kent where the company was based. I've managed to find a few similar cabs for sale online, including this one on Facebook Marketplace a few years back, and a similar one on eBay. Apart from that, there really hasn't been a lot out there over the last 10 years, or at least there wasn't, until this one came up for sale on the UK Video Arcade Collectors Forum in 2017. The really interesting thing about this is the picture of the flyer, showing the different models, and although mine's branded as a Video Star Mark II, the original Video Star here looks identical. Also, it's interesting to see that every single game featured on this flyer was released in 1988, and the original listing is for a game called Crude Buster, which was released in 1991. It seems to have Europa Coin branding on the surround and the marquee, meaning that this isn't a later conversion. I've read elsewhere that these cabinets conform to the Japanese Jammer standard, and that Europa Coin also sold official conversion kits for various new games as they were released. Anyway, back onto my cab. I had very limited tools, basically just a drill, but bought a complete arcade kit from X Arcade, and managed to talk a local shop fitter friend of a friend into routing out the control panel and a matching piece of acrylic, which I then assembled and wired myself. He also made an internal shelf for a spare 21 inch CRT PC monitor that I'd been donated, which I dremeled the front off of to make it fit the bezel that I'd scavenged from that Radio Times quiz machine. Yeah, I know, but bear in mind that this was over 10 years ago when you couldn't even give these things away. I also sanded and resprayed the whole thing in the garden. On the software side, I set up my old Core 2 Duo Mac Mini with Windows XP and a very basic arcade front end called Memoir, which matched the classic look I had in mind. Well that was pretty much it, and the cab moved house with us and took pride of place in the dining room of our current house, and served as well for years, getting fired up and played with regularly. It even made an appearance at our wedding reception. In fact, here's a video demo I recorded back in 2015. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fast forward to 2018. Well, the original monitor died, and with seven years worth of DIY experience and a garage full of power tools, I hatched a plan to turn the Video Star Mark II into the arcade machine I'd always dreamed of. I decided to start with a complete rewire, replacing the original fluorescent tube with some much brighter and more reliable LED strips, and the tired old speakers with some much better car speakers I bought online. I also fitted a power button on top, which is wired directly into the PC's motherboard. For now, the backlight, amp and monitor all switch off at the wall, but maybe this is something that could be improved. The control panel got a complete overhaul, with brand new genuine Samoa ball-top arcade sticks replacing the clunky old X-Arcade ones, some much quieter micro switches, and the addition of a USB spin track spinner from Ultimark, which is absolutely ideal for games like Tempest and Arkanoid. I went with wood grain vinyl for the final finish, maybe I'd been watching too many LGR videos at the time. As I was getting tired of having to hook up a keyboard for the most basic of functions, I also added dedicated function buttons for exit, select, pause and the main config menu, but I added some USB ports underneath for a keyboard if needed, and these can also be used for USB controllers for up to 4 player games. I also put the amp with the volume control behind what would usually be the coin door to make adjusting the volume easy. I set it all up with an older front end called Maximus Arcade, as well as a few emulators which all work great, but the front end is something I might change if I can find something better. I'd ideally like something with a very basic and classic look to it, rather than being flashy and over the top, which I think rules out hyperspin, although perhaps that can be skinned to give the effect I'm after. By the way, I'm well aware that this monitor is a bit on the dim side, and it makes a horrible arcing noise when it's warming up too. I'm going to be replacing the flyback transformer and recapping it in future, which should hopefully fix the issues. It is possible to get it to focus, but it drifts out again before too long, so hopefully a service will sort it out. It was working great when I first got it, so I assume the issues are just due to wear and tear. Anyway, on the hardware side this cab has a few tricks up its sleeve, but this is easily my favourite. The spinner knob can be removed in a couple of seconds using a small allen key, and replaced with this steering wheel. The joysticks have these quick release collars fitted, so getting the player 2 stick out of the way is no problem at all. In conjunction with the pedals I also added, this makes this cab great for driving games like OutRun. And even Ridge Racer. I modified the coin mechanism to add some micro switches to act as the insert coin buttons. I'll show you how these work when we take a look inside in a moment. This coin mechanism is from a genuine Atari Pit Fighter cab. So without further ado, I think it's time to open this up, and the first step is to remove the control panel using these 8 allen screws. Incidentally, my original plan was to have interchangeable panels with things like trackballs and light guns, and with that in mind I designed the control panel to be modular, with everything plugged in for easy removal. On the back you can see the buttons, and the joysticks with their 8-way restrictor plates, which could be changed for 4 or even 2-way for different types of games. The interface for the sticks and buttons is my old Ultimark PS2 mini pack, which plugs in using USB. Over this side is the much newer USB controller for the spinner. The insert coin buttons connect to these two wires. Taking the front panel off, we see the monitor, which is a 19 inch Tatung Type 58 SVGA model from one of those Mega Touch quiz machines you see in pubs. It originally had the touchscreen overlay glued to the front, which was a monumental effort to remove cleanly, but I got there in the end. Originally, I intended to fit a 20 inch Sony PVM, but it wasn't suitable for any of the later, higher resolution games I wanted to play, and besides, it seemed like a waste of a good PVM that I could otherwise use with my old consoles. It was a bit too deep for the cab anyway. One thing I need to get to finish this off is a suitable screen bezel. I tried the smoked acrylic route, but took it out as the monitor got dimmer, and besides, in the sunlight it basically acted as a mirror, so it wasn't ideal. While I was in there, I also completely changed the way the monitor mounted. 
angling it upwards to make the cab more comfortable to play when standing, and adding an extra panel at the top to fill the gap. This also necessitated completely changing the way the control panel fit. I also added a lot more internal bracing to make the cab as solid as possible, and solid it certainly is, although it's also incredibly heavy. Thankfully, it does have wheels on the back. Opening up the bottom half, you can see the strange way that I've cut this out, with the bottom of the coin door basically floating. There was a good reason behind this. I wanted to leave as much material in the bottom part as I could so the pedals had something solid to bolt onto. Now you can also see the back of the coin mechanism. This was originally much more complex and mechanical, but I removed all of that and fitted two micro switches with some bright red LEDs for the buttons. There is a shelf that fits here giving quite useful storage space, but the PC ended up being slightly taller than I'd anticipated so it doesn't currently fit. I will get around to moving the supports, of course. The PC is whatever the top of the range i3 was a few years back, Mamie's only single threaded anyway, and although I bought an arcade graphics card for it, I found that the integrated graphics worked quite happily at 800 by 600 even under Windows 10. It has an 80GB SSD for the OS and a 1TB mechanical SATA drive for everything else. Onto the pedals, which were from a game called Speed Up, apparently. These connect using a UHID Nano from Ultimark, with the accelerator being analog with a potentiometer and the brake being digital with a micro switch. It would be easy to upgrade the brake pedal to a potentiometer in future, but I haven't got around to it yet. Finally, there are just a couple of cosmetic touches to address on the outside. I'll need some new T moulding, which is easy enough, and I'll also need to finish off the sides. I'd primed these ready for some more filling and sanding and was thinking about eventually painting them plain black, but maybe there's something better. The back panel that I added works well and adds a lot of rigidity to the cab. I only used it for about 10 years without one. Access to the back is only really needed for adjusting the monitor, so hopefully once that's sorted I won't be removing it too often. So thanks for joining me, I hope you enjoyed the story so far. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for this cab, I'd love to hear them, so please do let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me to increase the visibility of my videos and helps me to grow my channel. And finally, if you're not subscribed and would like to see some more of this kind of stuff in the future, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. So thank you very much for joining me, and I'll hopefully see you again next time.